Open your Bibles now, please, to the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter number 4. Our text verses will be verses 1 through 11, and the message is entitled, What Would Jesus Do in Regard to Temptation? That's certainly our prayer that you have a determination, you join us for the journey in discovering uh, what would Jesus do in uh, so many aspects of our life uh, as we pursue this theme this year. For instance, next Lord's Day, uh, we'll be farther in the chapter uh, with the words of Jesus. We'll be discovering what would Jesus do in regards to his ministry? Uh, these will help us, I'm sure. Let's look at chapter 4. Uh, we have verses 1 through 11 for our text. The Bible said, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. Uh, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now notice the words and deeds of Jesus. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said in him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest thou at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of uh, the world and the glory of them. And said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leadeth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the words and deeds of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, for laying upon our heart the theme, what would Jesus do? Lord, you've said that temptation is common to all of us, every one of us. And uh, Lord, I'm praying today that we will learn uh, from how you dealt with temptation and to deal with it successfully ourselves. Uh, if there's anyone here that has not trusted Christ, Help them to boldly embrace Jesus as Lord and Savior today. Uh, Lord, in areas of obedience, I, I pray that people would surrender themselves to do what you've done. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. The text before us deals, of course, with the statements and actions of Jesus Christ when he was being tempted by the devil. Here's the 
situation. After being baptized, Jesus is led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. He uh, has fasted 40 days and 40 nights uh, for to prepare, as it were, for the task of ministry ahead of him. And he is understandably at a very uh, hungry and weakened condition. Satan arrives and presents him with three great temptations. Number one, to turn stones into bread. Number two, to jump off the top of the temple. And number three, to worship Satan in order to own the whole world and rule over it. Well, what Jesus said and did in regard to his temptations when applied to our lives personally will help us have victory when we are faced with temptation, uh, which we certainly will be. Here's my guiding thoughts for the message today. First of all, in the story, we learn something about the times in which we're tempted. Secondly, we learn something about temptations themselves. And then lastly, of course, we learn how to triumph over our temptations. Temptation. The text tells us something about the times in which we face temptations. Notice, if you please, it says that when he had fasted, Forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungry. Now, we don't use that word so much today. It's old English uh, to say he was a hungry man. Uh, he was a hungry man after not eating for 40 days and 40 nights. And he's understandable, uh, understandably in a weakened condition. And then at this time, Satan arrives on the scene and tempts him, saying, if you're the son of God. What's the use of being a hungry man uh, whenever you, you, by your confession, by, by your being, why can't you just command the rocks in front of you, the, the, the stones to, to turn into bread and then pick them up and, and eat them? Here's what we learn. Temptation comes to us in a personal, powerful, persuasive way when we're the most susceptible to it. I, I, I want you to get that. Temptation comes to us in a, a very personal powerful, persuasive way when we're most susceptible to it. Let me try to illustrate uh, that point. Often, after Faye has just prepared me uh, an excellent breakfast and I've, I've eaten until, as they say, your belly is full, uh, particularly when 
uh, I'm blessed to get the country breakfast. Uh, and by that I mean the sausages or bacons and scrambled eggs and gravy and uh, and, and and biscuits uh, uh, and orange juices and and, and, and and coffees and and you feast. And then after breakfast, I go off to work and. Often she says, well, what do you want for supper? Trust me, I always say, I have no supper on my mind whatsoever. I'm stuffed and, 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 and I can't think at this time about what I'd want for supper. But I don't know how many times she's done that and she's never got an answer from me because yeah, that's the wrong time. To tempt you, isn't it? Uh, let me say this. Don't go to the grocery store when you're hungry. Have you ever noticed that you'll spend a lot more money than you intended to spend or you, you, you want to spend? I mean, you'll walk down the aisle and, and perhaps your belly's growled a little bit and you'll see those fillets. Oh, those look good, don't they? And you'll see this snack looks good and that snack and you'll throw this in the cart and that in the cart because you're succumbing to temptation. Because you're, you're being tempted at the, at the time in which you're the, the, the weakest and most susceptible uh, to it. So you see, the devil tempts us at times of weakness and in areas where most successful. Uh, let me uh, encourage you. If you have a, uh, is it a taste or weakness for negativity? And you know, uh, everybody, I, I've noticed, uh, I've learned over the years that there's so many different personalities. And uh, if... If you have a, a, a personal tendency to, to negativity, if, if you're the kind of, of person that usually the glass is half empty instead of almost full, uh, don't have much dealings with other negative people. Get around someone that's positive to offset and to counterbalance and to strengthen you in the area of that weakness to negativity. Uh, strive to get around someone that's positive and sees the bright side of things. Uh, if you're a not a morning person, I've always been a morning person, and uh, I don't understand why everybody isn't a morning person, but I've discovered that a lot of people just aren't morning persons. If you're not a morning person, then chances are you'll be tempted to stay up too late on Saturday night to where you'll really have problems getting in the house of God for Sunday school and church on Sunday. So get in bed early enough to help you in the, the weakness of not being a morning person. You know, some people, they, man, they're so not a morning person. I mean, it's like a bird. You know, it's it's like a burn. No smiles coming here, you know. Yeah. Uh, so the, the the devil will will tempt you in areas of your weakness. Now, now let me let me tell you something else. If you have a taste for or weakness. Uh, when it comes to alcohol, 
And just let me say this. I've lived long enough to where a lot of people do. Now, I'll be honest with you. I never did. I never did. I, I always thought that that stuff tastes like slop or something. I mean, I, did, I just never did like the taste of it. And I have tried it. I've tried it too many times. There are years and years and years of the past. I'm not proud of myself. But, but some people like the taste of that stuff. I got a brother, I never could figure him out, but he, he, he declares uh, he has a taste for whiskey. He just can't help but love the taste of whiskey. And because of that, he's a solid uh, person today, uh, but he's been a recovering alcoholic for, for a good number of years now. But one of his secrets to success is he, he doesn't get around people where uh, the, the taste of alcohol is made available to them. Uh, listen, the devil will, will attack you, will tempt us in areas of our, our weaknesses. And I don't want to preach on, but all of us know the area of our weakness. So we must be conscious that in the area of our weakness is the, is the area uh, and the times in which Satan will tempt us personally, powerfully, and persuasively because he knows the area of our susceptibility. Now, secondly, we learn something of the temptations themselves. Let's examine the three great temptations faced by Christ. And uh, to help us better understand them, before we do, uh, let's preface uh, it with what the Apostle John said in chapter 2 and verse 15, he said, Love not the world. Here's the admonition to you and I. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, now here it is, all that is in the world, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth for ever. Now, let's look at the temptations presented to Jesus. Number one, he is hungry. Uh, he's a hungry man. He's his body needs sustenance, needs, needs food. And the devil arises and says, turn these stones into, into bread. Now, can you imagine that? Here is the Son of God. He is God the Son as well as Son the God. He is the one that still the storms. He's the one that raises the dead. He is the one that heals the sick. He is the one that lays his own life down and lifts his own life back up. He is very God. Listen, very God could speak the word or but glance at the rocks before him and turn them into the best tasting bread to be found. Imagine having the power to do that. You see, listen, this matches the lust of the flesh in the area of hunger. Genesis chapter 25, verses 29, through the rest of the chapter, you read a story about a man named Esau. 
And Esau was the eldest in the family and had what's known as the birthright, which, uh, oh, which uh, entitled him to the bulk of his father's estate in biblical times. And he goes on a hunting expedition and is unsuccessful and comes back famished. He's very, very hungry. So much so, he, 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 he just wants with every fiber of his being to have bread. And he is not able to get it. So Jacob is on hand. And Esau lusted and hungered so that the Bible said he sold his very birthright to Jacob in order to get a bowl of chili or lentils or, or foodstuffs. You see, temptation comes. I mean, uh, the lust of our flesh uh, in this case, in the area of hunger, in any case, the lust of our flesh. And to have the ability, the wherewithal, the opportunity to satisfy that lust, that is the temptation itself. And then to jump from the roof of the temple well, he takes him and they ascend the temple, uh, the very highest place of the temple. And, and he says, just jump off of here because it's written that, you, you know, the angels will hold you up in their arms and you will float through the air and uh, you will land without harm. And uh, you could have a, a look at me, a- a- attitude. To jump off, the, that, you see, matches the pride of life. The look at me, what can I do? Temptation. And all of us have that. You know, I was thinking in the office as I was praying earlier today about the message. Uh, a lot of good singers have had their start in churches. Did you know that? They really have. They really have, and they have used at one time their talents for the glory and honor of God. But they were so blessed to be so good that a scout discovered them. And in that discovery, they succumbed to the pride of life and chose to be on the stage of the world with a look at me, what I can do, attitude. And I'm not saying these are bad people. I'm just saying that, uh, you, you know, uh, Glenn Campbell sang a song, some of you might remember from years ago, and I never will forget the phrase. He said, I want to be where the lights are shining on me. I think all of us have a certain weakness in that area. And that's a temptation that the devil uh, gives us. Uh, and it's best not to be what I can do. It's best what Jesus can do with me. The temptations, the pride of life. Oh, you got to watch that pride. I'll tell you, it'll... it'll, it'll uh, <laughs> the pride goeth before a fall. And then to possess and rule over the world. Now this, of course, matches the lust of the eyes, coveting wanting to have material things for pleasure. First Timothy 6, 9 said, They that would be rich fall into temptations, and their lives are ruined. And the temptation to migrate toward material things and materialism, to have and to have everything and to get everything you want, and to have your, uh, uh, your, your priorities in life all, all messed up. That is the temptation that you face, that I face, that Jesus 
faced and uh, uh, coveting material things when all those things will come to naught one day and we shall leave them for eternity. Then whose shall those things be that we have made the object of our life, the goal of our life, the love of our life? The temptations themselves. Listen, the same temptations and the same areas of temptations are common to every one of us. We are all tempted in our flesh in every area that feeds the fleshly appetite, whatever that appetite might be. We are all tempted in the area of the pride of life. Our pride may be in being on display. But I thought of this, I think the first time ever, our pride may be on not being on display. Our pride may be in just leave me alone. I don't want anybody to see me. I, I'm just me. I want my own little island. I don't want to be bothered by anybody or anything. I don't want nobody to see me. I don't want to see anybody. Our, our pride may be on wanting to be in display. Our pride may be in an unwillingness to uh, display in any way that, of course, would keep us from displaying the work of God in our lives. And we're all tempted in these areas of wanting material things uh, that we see, we, we like, and we enjoy. And then lastly, we learn how to triumph over our temptation. Look at Jesus' reply each time Satan tempts him. Verse 4, after being tempted to turn the stones to bread, Jesus said, it is written. And then he gave the text. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That's found in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. I think verse 13. And then when he's tempted to... uh, uh, jump off of the roof and float through there and make a spectacle of himself and have all eyes on him to look what he can do. He says, it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That, that's from Deuteronomy 6, 16. And then when he's tempted to receive the world at the hands of the devil and, and own it all, he says, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. That's found in Deuteronomy 6, 13. And here's what I want you to see. Each time Jesus was tempted, he used the word of God. It is written in every area of his temptation. It is written. Written, The Bible says there's a scripture for this uh, in every area. So here's what we learn. We triumph over temptation by using God's word, by actually claiming God's word, by saying God said it. I am willing to believe it. I am going to embrace it. I am going to obey it. That really is where triumph over temptation uh, lies. Now, in closing, here's what I want you to see. This, of course, means that we must be exposed to the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17. The best thing any of us can do is keep ourselves and our children around the Word of God, exposure to the Word of God. 
every way that you can get the Word of God in them. Uh, Rob and Heather, I'm so proud of your kids. They came in this morning. I hope you don't mind my saying this, but they were showing me their Bibles that they that you all have got them. Why wouldn't the black? Parents, get your kids Bibles. Don't only get them Bibles. I, I told a little girl at the bowling alley, yes, I said, now you need to read some of it every day, honey. Read. And read the, 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 the Bible. Discover the truths of the Bible. Listen, get your children in our Sunday school programs. They desperately need that. Have you ever thought about this? Uh, there is 24 hours in every day, and there's seven days in every week. And you look at the things of God and the house of God, and probably the whole morning service is three hours, traveling time and going and everything, leaving and going back home out of all of that week. And and the children's programs in church uh, an hour or so uh, here and there, and you put it all together, and you've only got a few hours out of many, many hours. And let me tell you something, folks. You better get that Word of God in your life and in the lives of your children. Because I want you to understand when it comes to this business of temptation, it's common to every one of us. The devil knows our weakness wherever it might be and we will be tempted time and time and time and time again and we will will never cease. So we need to know the Word of God in order to give the Word of God back to the devil who we're tempted uh, to to sin. And then he said, we've got to embrace that Word, you see, as our standard of faith. Jesus clearly spoke and acted according to the written Word. Word of God. The Bible says it, I choose to obey it attitude is the attitude of victory. You know, a lost person triumphs over the lostness of their condition and over being separated from God when they're willing to believe the Word of God and come and trust Christ whom the Bible says is the Son of God and only Savior of the world when when they're exposed to that word and hear that word and are willing to obey that word and do what that word says they have eternal life Uh, the the, uh, the believer for victory and for joy inward joy and for a clear conscience a good conscience uh, uh, obeying God, God what the word says the word said I can't deny it. That's what God said. I'll do it. That's where triumph comes. And uh, let me close with this. Many years ago, perhaps it was when I was earning my uh, theological degrees, uh, I, I heard a story about a missionary on the foreign field. And he had won some of the, the native peoples to Christ. And they had been baptized, and he was teaching them how to have church, and they were uh, serving the Lord. And some of them were coming along, and they were growing, and they were becoming teachers, uh, uh, and they were becoming helpers of others, and preachers, and some of them were going to be missionaries of their own selves. And one of them came to the faithful uh, pastor missionary and said, I don't understand, pastor said. There's such a turmoil going on inside me. Said, preacher said, I've got two dogs living inside of me and they're always fighting against one another. And... uh, and, and, and I, I just, one wants to do bad things and the other one wants to do good things. Preacher, that's the way I feel. And the wise pastor with just few words said, which dog wins? And the fellow thought a little bit and said, the one I feed the most the one you feed the most. 
the Word of God. It is written. Exposure to the Word of God, uh, receiving and applying my life, obeying the Word of God. I find myself triumph, triumphing in the work of God. What would Jesus do in the area of temptation? He would teach us there's times when we all go through it. The Bible said temptation is common to all of us. All of us have the same temptation. And those temptations themselves attack us in the area where we're most susceptible. Our flesh, our pride, our our lust. And we can try when we do what Jesus did. Just decide, willfully decide to obey the Word of God. 